Well, let us see the first experiment. Develop a winding diagram for DC machine. So there are many types of uh, designs. So we'll be st sticking ourselves with respect to simplex, uh, simplex winding, and the two types, progressive and retrospective. So we'll see only progressive type under lap and wave. Right. So simplex lap and wave winding. So before going, we we'll to understand few definitions and few terminologies. Then let us see how do we draw the winding diagram. Right. So Armature winding is the place where energy, is, uh, energy consumption takes place, that is electrical to mechanical or mechanical to electrical, right. So then uh, classifications, there are into two types, they are lap and wave, right. So let us say for example if we have four poles, so when we have four poles across two brushes, so let us say these, these, uh, these two are your carbon brushes, right. So across these two brushes, if, uh, if there are four uh, parallel paths, right, so current entering and current leaving across these brushes. Similarly, let us say we have one more type of winding, right? So let us just see out of, out of these two, which is lap and which is wave. Again, two carbon brushes and we have only two parallel paths irrespective of number of poles, right? So current entering and leaving. So this is your lap and this is your wave. So irrespective of number of poles, wave will always have two carbon brushes. This is what we have seen, right? But for uh, uh, but wave can also have more than two brushes so that it is good commutators, right? It has good influence with respect to commutator. That is, it has to ensure that good commutate, good commutation take place and that is why we can have practically more than two carbon brushes, right? So lap in number of parallel path A is equal to P, whatever is under wave, A is equal to two always. So as you can see, the current enters, it splits. So this can take more current, that is your lap winding can take more current compared to your wave, right. So this is used for high current, thus low voltage, this is used for low current, thus high voltage applications. And we will be seeing in the, uh, the, uh, the diagram, the winding diagram that I will be showing, so where you can see the windings here will add your voltages and here it will, current will be adding. It means each path is being parallel here, here each path will be in series. So we will see some more, some more differences in the upcoming slides. So classifications of winding. So there are two types, that is closed and open type. So closed is generally used for DC and open winding is generally used for AC. I think the definition is much clear. In a, in a closed type winding, there is a closed path around the armature or stator, right? And an open type, as the name suggests, there is no closed path. And the applications, AC machines, they use open and the DC, they use closed type. So let us see some definitions. Conductor, what, what, is, a, what is a conductor? The active length of a wind wire or a strip in a slot. What is uh, pole pitch? So pole pitch is, uh, it is specified in, in terms of number of slots, right? There is a distance between the poles in terms of slot, I repeat, there is distance between poles in terms of slot, okay? What is turn? A turn consists of two conductors separated from each other by a pole pitch or nearly so, but they are connected in series. series and their EMF will be additive in nature, right? So for example, this is one turn, right? And this is three turns, right? As you can see, there are three turns in a slot, right? And you can see here, they are all there in still series. That's what, that is what they're trying to say. They're still connected in series. So what is a coil? When uh, one or more turns are connected in series and placed in, a, in almost similar magnetic position, they are called as coils. So this complete thing is called as singleton coil. Let us start, uh, uh, you know, it is placed in almost similar to mag magnetic positions, right? Uh, so coil may be say a single or multi turn. As you can see here, it is three turn. Similarly, you can have more than three turns also. Next, let us see what is coil side. If one coil side is inserted in a, in a slot, then it is called a single layer. You can see here it is just only one coil. Thus, it is single. And here it is three, right? If two coil sides are inserted in a slot, it is known as double layer and so on. There's triple layer and quadruple layer and multi layer, right? And that is denoted by a symbol called M. Right. Now when two coil sides, when two coil sides form a coil are separated exactly one pole pitch apart, then they are said to be full pitch or they should said to be short, short pitch. What is that letter C is? So let us say this is your uh, coil. Right, and you can see it is between the north and south pole. These two sides are coil. This is called as coil side. 
right this one is called as coil side this is the other coil side of the one coil so you can see it is a multi turn coil you can see here i have a thin wire and here i have a thick wire thus this is a multi turn coil this is starting end and this is the end of the coil and you can see the distance between these two is called as either full pitch or short pitch depending upon the distance between the two poles the distance between the two poles is called as pole pitch so if the coil side if the coil sides are equal to the pole pitch then it is called as full pitch as it is called as short pitch right so coil pitch or coil span is when it is equal to pole pitch it is 180 degree electrical then it is called as full pitch or full pitch winding so what is coil pitch coil pitch denotes the number of slots the coil will cover so in this case it is two slots on inserting into the slots right and this is for the example for a multi turn which is of short pitch you can see it is reduced by one slot fine then let us see some more definitions what is back pitch so back pitch is defined as the distance between two sides of a coil measured in terms of conductors at the back end of commutator and that is known as back pitch but without the diagram we cannot understand and back pitch uh, and other other definitions has to be understood based on either lap or day so let us see a lap winding let us say this is your commutator right let us say this is your commutator right we have, we have three commutator segments and this is your north pole and south pole and the winding starts from one of the commutator right and it ends to the adjacent commutator i repeat it starts from one commutator and ends with the adjacent commutator and it's moving and it's moving in clockwise direction as you can see right and thus this is called as progressive retrospective retro uh, retrospective this come this winding comes and lands behind let us say this is 1 2 and 3 this winding here this coil side it lands at at uh, n minus 1 right and that is that is called as retrospective right reprogressive sorry reprogressive not not retrospective reprogressive progressive and reprogressive then next uh, so this is your lap winding uh, progressive type uh, and then the distance between two sides of a coil measured in terms of conductors at the back end of commutator so this is called as this is your second coil right this is the start and this is the end this is called as yb right this can also be defined as the distance between the coil one coil the distance between a coil with respect to two sides with respect to slots right so this is one slot and this is the other slots so a coil is started here it has ended here so coil has started here it goes to one slot then it goes to another slot and then ends at this commutator segment so distance between the two sides of the coil with respect to slots is also called as yb or the distance between two sides of a coil measured in terms of conductor at the back end of commutator is also called as yb right so this is your uh, for one coil side of 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 uh, the red the red color indicates one coil right a coil so the ends of these two of its coil side the distance between the ends of the coil side is also called as yb i repeat the distance between the coil sides of a coil is also called as yb next let us see what is yf so yf is defined as the distance between two sides of a coil connected to commutator segment so you can see commutator segment is missing here connected to a commutator segment measured in terms of conductor at the front end of commutator so this distance is called as yf it is also you can also redefine this as you can see this is the distance between two different coils it is not of same coil right so what you can what what you can redefine the saying that distance between end of one coil side and start of a successive coil under the same commutator i repeat you can also redefine this as a distance between end of one coil side so you can see this is the start and this is the end from from the end of one coil side and the start of a successive coil under the same commutator segment is also called as yf right that is called as front pitch now what is average pitch average pitch is yb minus yf will be its average so the average of y uh, of yb and yf uh, is called as average pitch this will be near to the pole pitch measured in terms of conductor this will be equal to pole pitch right what is pole pitch distance between the north and south pole this is between the adjacent poles are called as pole pitch right next let us see what is commutator segment 
So commutative segment is number of armature slots into number of coil sites all divided by 2. Right? So let us say for example if we have uh, uh, armature slots as uh, 30 right? and coil side is being 1. So the number of commutative segments would be 15. That is 30 into 1 divided by divided by 4. Sorry, divided by 2. That is nothing but 15. You'll have 15 commutative segments. So number of uh, number of conductors it is given as Z into number of coil sides. I think this 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 formula you are aware, right? So now let us see what is commutative pitch or YC. So commutative pitch or YC is a distance measured in commutator segment so this is a commutator segment in commutator segment between two ends of the coil the two ends of one coil so this is the start of one coil this is the end of its coil so distance between these two is called as your commutator pitch right so this is called as yc right so yb is the start and end of the same coil in with respect to slots of a or with respect to conductor is called as back pitch what is yf the distance between the end of one coil to the start of the successive coil of the same commutator segment from the same or under the same commutator seg segment is called as yf right what is yc yc is the distance measured in commutator segment this is measured in commutator segment between the ends of the coil between the start and end of a coil is called as yc so this is also yc right so this from this end to this end this is also yb right and we have only one yf here so let us say here one more coil here this is between this uh, start of one coil and end of one more coil is also called as yf right let us see this uh, let us see the same terminologies with respect to wave winding that is where is uh, yf uh, sorry where is yb yf and yc here so what is yb yb is this uh, yb is defined as yb is defined as the distance between a coil but where with respect to slots so these are your armature slots over armature slots these winding will be passing right so similarly here it would be this distance or this distance or this dis no the distance between of the same coil right so th this distance is called as yb or this distance is called as yb right so distance between two sets of a coil measured in terms of conductor at the back end of commutator so this is your yb so this also can be yb yb right with respect to the same conduct next what is yf yf is the distance between the end of a coil and start of a next successive coil what are the same commutator segment so this can be yf according to the definition this also can be yf according to the definition right so this is yf next what is yc commutator pitch is distance between the commutator segments at the end of coil that is start and end so this is the start of one coil and this is its end this is yc or this is the start of one coil this is other coil and this is its end this is also called as yc right so that these are uh, for wave winding where do we measure yb yf and yc these dotted line represents at the back of the winding right the name is called as wave or lap because let us see for wave it's called as wave because you can see it represents in the form of wave and you can see with respect to commutators right it appears as series right so in series your voltages would be added and current remains same thus this is used for high voltage applications and low current applications similarly for your lap you can see for lap you can see there's an overlap of windings right and you can see between commutator segments these two coils they appear parallel between your commutator segments they appear parallel in parallel current gets divided but voltage remains same so this is used for less voltage but high current applications so lap winding the finishing end of one coil is connected via commutator segment to the start of the adjacent coil under the same pole as the sides of adjacent coil overlap each other it's known as lap winding so coils are in parallel as told hence voltage remains same and currents gets added wave winding the finish end of a coil under one pole pair is connected to the start of a coil under sorry for the spelling mistake under the next pole pair the winding forms a wave in its coil that's why we call it as wave winding 
Now, since we connect the coils in series here, it's also called as series winding. Now, as I told, voltages add and current remains same in series, right? Now, commutator pitch. So, it is a distance measured in commutator segment between two ends of the coil. So, let us say we have one, two, and three. Let us see this for wave winding, right? We are yes. So, this is for lap. Right, this is your YC, this is your second coil, and last of all, this is progressive. It, it as it moves towards increasing order, or you can say, I've uh, we've started from one. It is the the coil has ended in next adjacent. I repeat, next adjacent commutator segment. Right, it has not gone to n minus one. Okay, it has not gone to this red color conductor has not gone to n minus one. Right, and that is why it is called as progressive type of winding. Right. Now, as two ends of the coil is connected to the adjacent commutator segment, YC is called as plus one. So for progressive underlap, it is given as plus one. Y one, you can see, is difference of one commutator, right? And for uh, reprogressive, it will be given as minus one, right? And this is called as simplex lap lap winding. So simplex because the YC is equal to one. Simple. Duplex lap winding. So let us see what is duplex lap winding by definition. If the distance between two consecutive coils is equal to two commutator segment, right? I repeat. If the distance, right now the distance is about one commutator segment. If the distance between the two successive coils is equal to two commutator segments, then it is called as duplex lap winding. So then, for progressive it is two, and for retrogressive it is minus two. Right. So let us see what exactly is duplex lap winding. So let us say we have six uh, commutator segments. This is co coil uh, one starts at one, ends at three, and you can see this difference is about two commutator segments, and it is it is progressive in nature. It is it is from one it has gone to three. It has not gone to n minus two. Right. Thus, uh, if it goes to n minus two, then it is called as retrogressive winding. Right. Similarly. Other other coil starts from three. Other winding starts from three and set five. And the difference between these two is again plus two, right? From three to it has gone to five. It has not gone to three to one. So this winding ends at one. It is called as retrogressive winding, right? And similarly, from five it has to go to seven and so on, right? So we'll be dealing with simplex lap winding where Y C is plus one for progressive, and we'll not be seeing what is retrogressive. So you can. I'll be sharing you a video where you can understand much more. Uh, if you have any doubts, you can understand through that video what exactly is progressive, what exactly is retrogressive, and some points on your uh, YB, YF, YC, uh, uh, and your uh, coil pitch, pole pitch, and turns, uh, and then uh, much uh, much more clearly like how currents are divided in per lap, how it is how lap winding is used for high current application, and how wave is used for low volt, high voltage. Applications, right? So here YC is actually plus two. So for simplex wave winding, the formula for YC is given as Z plus two X by P. So based on this, we have to calculate what is YC for a given problem, right? And minus for retrogressive winding, plus for progressive, and minus for retrogressive winding. So the next video we'll see the procedure for lap winding.